This is a Creative Nomad Jukebox Zen NX, a hard drive based MP3 player first released in August of 2003, 20 years ago this month. It was positioned on the higher end of the MP3 player market, competing directly against the third generation Apple iPod with an attractive price point. It supports MP3, WAVE, and WMA, or Windows Media Audio Playback within the specs listed and features Creative's Environmental Audio Extensions, or EAX, which offers a variety of DSP presets like reverb, speed shifting, and environment adaptation. It features an LED backlit screen with a green tint, a 2.0 USB mini B port for transferring files, and a three-directional scroller that moves up, down, and in to make entries. It has seven buttons in total, power, play, back forward, menu, back out, and a tiny reset button accessible with a paper clip. The front faceplate pops off at the switch on the bottom of the player. Underneath the faceplate is a removable battery. Fortunately, the OEM battery in this player still works. The power supply to this player went missing a long time ago. Fortunately, the Zen NX is directly compatible with Sony PSP chargers. The PSP receives power at the same exact voltage, uses the same DC jack and polarity as the NX, and delivers up to 2000 milliamps. OEM chargers made by Sony have an excellent build quality that's hard to match, and they're both affordable and easy to find due to the sheer number of PSPs sold. It is a winning situation all around. From factory, the NX sports a 2.5-inch 44-pin Fujitsu IDE hard drive, nearly identical to the type found in laptops of its era, with 20-gig and 30-gig variants available at retail. Where Apple utilized smaller, proprietary Toshiba hard drives, Low Spec Gamer made a great video on the how and why of that here, Creative opted to use standard, off-the-shelf hard drives that were much cheaper and easier to source. This gave the Zen NX a lot more storage space for a much lower price point, with the trade-off being some extra dimensional bulk and thickness. Hard drive-based MP3 players were among the first on the market that could fit someone's entire music collection with room to spare. The biggest catch, of course, being that mechanical hard drives have platters which move at extremely fast speeds, typically 5400 to 7200 RPM. They're as precise as they are fragile. Even minor shock and impact can cause permanent damage. On that note, this particular NX is the 20 gig model, and its hard drive is long dead. For true mobility, mechanical hard drives are not exactly an ideal choice. If you look back at a lot of the customer feedback and press reviews about the Zen NX, the most common complaint by far surrounds its inability to play back music smoothly while in motion, be it driving, jogging, or running. People had no choice but to put up with these kinds of trade-offs in 2003. At the time, hard drives were really the only way to offer double or even single-digit gigabyte storage for a reasonable price. Flash memory costs a lot for a little, so it was typically relegated to the low end of the market in very low capacities with players that could only hold a few dozen songs. It took a few more years for even one gig of flash memory to be affordable. Fortunately. We now live in an age where flash memory is king. It's harder, better, faster, stronger than ever, if you will, and it's very affordable. Even more fortunate, replacing the dead hard drive in a Zen NX is a fairly straightforward process. It boots into a recovery mode that is capable of formatting new drives on its own, and it recognizes about 131 gig of space. Other than a computer running Windows 2000 or XP, you don't need any special tools, devices, or software other than the firmware flashing tool, which is still available for download on Creative's website. As a side note, the firmware flasher does work on Windows 10, but the driver that allows access to the player's library still needs something like 2000 or XP. The bottom piece of the player with the faceplate switch secures the hard drive and PCB assembly from the back, and four machine screws secure the hard drive and PCB together from the front. The PCB and hard drive assembly are best removed from the housing together at the same time with gentle guidance. 
In getting this to work, I have attempted almost every form of flash memory that's compatible with the 44-pin IDE interface. Micro SD card, regular SD card, compact flash, and MSATA SSDs paired with a variety of adapters. Unfortunately, no mix of SD or compact flash worked properly. The player was able to recognize one specific combo, a 128GB microSD card in a compact flash adapter in bay 1 of a dual bay CF to IDE adapter. However, the adapters seem to throw off the USB controller, so the player is unable to talk with the computer. Since the Zen NX uses a proprietary file system, there is no easy way to simply take the microSD card out and copy the music over to it separately. In my tests with the original Xbox, Compact Flash worked the best and gave the least amount of resistance. With the Zen and X, the inverse was true. The player simply would freeze on the formatting dialog box every single time. My initial tests were with a 128GB MCTA SSD and a 44-pin IDE adapter, which the Zen and X recognized instantly and formatted without any issue. Since the player recognizes approximately 131 gig, a cheap 128 gig MSATA SSD is ideally the perfect fit. In a perfect world, this would be a plug and play fix, but the design of the Zen NX presents one major problem. Given how bulky its housing is, the 44 pin socket on its PCB was designed to be as compact and as low profile as possible, and its pins and traces are quite fragile. The screws that secure the hard drive to the housing run through the PCB, effectively compressing the three components together. The only types of 2.5 inch drives that can appropriately reach that clearance are those which use surface mount soldering for their IDE interfaces. Surface mounting the pins to the top side of the PCB guarantees a completely flat bottom surface and the best amount of clearance possible. Unfortunately, between the MC to 44 pin adapters I own personally, and the ones I'm finding online, all of them use through-hole soldering for the pins on the IDE interface. Since the pins stick out on the opposite side of the board, it creates a major clearance issue. The entire drive ends up sticking out at a 30 degree angle, making it impossible to compress the individual components together without brute forcing them and likely damaging the socket. It is possible to put one of these adapters in the player at an angle, and cheat by using the back plate to compress it in place, but the entire assembly will be partially loose and it's not ideal. This leaves us with three options. Option one, giving up and using a regular laptop hard drive to be the safest and most boring option and also leave it open to impact and strikes that might take it out of commission very easily. Option two, be finding a new old stock PETA SSD from 20 years ago. These are very uncommon in their time, and finding a genuine these days isn't easy, especially for an affordable price. Option three is trimming down all the pins on a cheap MSATA to SSD adapter with wire cutters and reflowing the solder. Since I was already this deep into the rabbit hole, I decided to go with option three to determine its viability. I also ordered a 64 gig Transcend pay to SSD as an option of very last resort. Admittedly, my approach for trimming the pins could have been cleaner. I trimmed them one by one and frequently cleaned the debris off the cutters to ensure they were getting as close to the surface as possible, periodically reflowing the solder until everything looked level. Due to the soft, dense nature of solder, some pins required a few cuts to be level with the rest. The cleanest, easiest, most thorough way to do this would be to use a desoldering gun on all but the furthest two pins on both edges of the interface by keeping a total of four pins soldered to the PCB to act as anchors, the rest of the pins could be trimmed flush, then resoldered. Once those 40 pins are soldered back in place, the four anchor pins could then be desoldered themselves, trimmed flush just like the rest, and resoldered just like the rest. Fortunately, my quick and dirty soldering approach was enough to get us the physical clearance we needed, and it works. 
The 128 gig Samsung M SATA SSD I was using is very well worn, so I bought a 64 gig Dogfish M SATA SSD for $12. The adapter I modified costs about $12 new. Compare this to the price of a real PETA SSD. While I was researching this player, the most interesting resource I found by far was nomadness.net, a message board that appears to have existed between 2001 and 2007 or so that was focused on hacking and modding a wide variety of creative nomad players, including the Zen NX and its immediate successor, the NX Extra. There appears to have been rich conversations about everything from modding firmware to reverse engineering creative's proprietary file system to attempting to install Rockbox. Sadly, this forum went down for good many years ago, and I could only find little bits and pieces of its content through the Wayback Machine, which unfortunately only appeared to archive the first page of many long threads. If anyone knows whether or not this forum is backed up or archived elsewhere, please do reach out in the comments. It's a historically significant source of lost information that doesn't appear to be present anywhere else, and I'd be willing to throw in on getting it back up online somewhere, even if in a totally archived, frozen state. As far as I'm aware, you need the following to communicate with the Zen NX. A computer running Windows 2000 or XP natively, one of Creative's file manager programs, I'm using Nomad Explorer, or Windows Media Player 9 or 10. I was initially using Windows Media Player to sync my files, but it's a little slower than just dragging and dropping with Nomad Explorer. If you intend to fill up the entire drive, Nomad Explorer is pretty fast.
Looks like it's safe to say that it works. In summary, this is probably the third or fourth time that I've had to reinstall the firmware and start completely from scratch. This time, the MP3 player had about 5,000 songs on it, and it was playing for about 12 hours straight. Everything was running great. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped with the playback error message, which is kind of a nightmare, unfortunately. These are very temperamental, and it's hard to tell whether it's the firmware, the file system, one specific MP3, or some mix of the three or four that I just mentioned. It just stops and breaks. It still had about two bars of battery life left on it, and it seemed like it was just going to keep running. Uh, but then it stopped with the playback error, and uh, when I reset it, it booted into recovery mode. And unfortunately, it's been stuck on the re uh, rebuilding library screen now for at least five minutes. Worse yet, the firmware upgrade tool has been stuck on the now rebooting phase. So I'm going to guess that I'm going to have to start completely from scratch with this again and uh, take the whole thing apart, reformat the SSD, put it back in the player, let it reformat it, let it reinstall the firmware, and then copy all the songs back over again and just hope that it doesn't break. When I turn the player on, it just boots and freezes on the rebuilding library screen which means something with the file system, which is completely proprietary, got messed up. And in order to fix it, what I have to do is take the player apart and then get a USB StarTech adapter, 44 pin PETA to USB StarTech adapter specifically, and plug it into my computer. And then in disk management, Right click on the volume here and initialize the disk. Now it's online. It says it's unallocated. And what I'm going to do is just make a new volume. And there we go. Now we have a perfectly functional NTFS formatted 64 gig SSD. Everything's working fine. The SSD isn't corrupt. Uh, it's just that file system, which again is totally proprietary and probably conditioned to work with mechanical hard drives. Uh, something along the line, 12, 13 hours into playback got corrupted. So now I have to start from scratch. And, uh, quite frankly, I'm not happy about it, but, uh, let's rebuild. And once again, start from scratch. You should see about 61 gig. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, I'm gonna guess here that one MP3 out of 5,000 might have been corrupted. 
and that was enough to ruin everything. Uh, these are very temperamental. To be fair, it's 20 years old. Maybe it's not compatible with some kind of codec that's come along in the time since. But even if you read about these uh, in forum posts from 2004, 2005, you'll find some similar problems, similar issues, or it just stops one day. And then it kind of just becomes a nightmare to work with. It's a shame because these are otherwise built very well. And I think with um, some kind of new age hacking and enthusiasm, these could be uh, turned into very powerful devices. It's really just down to that proprietary file system and the proprietary firmware that's on them. Yeah, I, I think with uh, a little bit of tweaking from a hacking and homebrew angle, these would be quite the powerhouse. But as they are with all the stock programs, uh, it's a little rough. <laughs>